So basically, I just dropped those 189 bars of different random sounds into Sampler and started randomizing it. And this is what Sampler looks like. It's a Max for Live device. Uh, you can find it on the Isotonic website. Isotonic is always pushing the envelope with really quality Max for Live devices that really, really have a specific use that answer a problem in the real world. Essentially, it's a sequencer with 16 steps and there are these different pages, right? So it's got a point and that's the point in the sample that it's gonna jump around in. Uh, it's got the size of the slice or the sequence uh, in subdivisions of our uh, beat. And then it's got pitch controls and level controls. And it's got a cool random uh, feature for all of them where it's great for exploring again and not really having an agenda when you're making music and just seeing what, what happens through that exploration. So what I want to do is I'm just going to sample this, you know, a couple of like out there sounds and uh, then we're going to drop it into Sampler. And as soon as I get Sampler on there, I'm going to open the instrument itself and it's asking me to drop, it's asking me to drop a sample in here. So I'm just going to get uh, the track that we just recorded and or the clip we just recorded from this track and drop it into Sampler. And there it is. Right away, it's like immediately producing something interesting. It's got uh, an attack control. All right, so we can make it more textural. We can control the delay. I mean, the decay, rather, the sustain. And that's of each one of the steps, All right? And we also have a delay we can add. All right, and we've got a filter on there too that we can set up too. So we can make it a little bit darker if we wanted to. So what I want to do is I just want to start randomizing some stuff. So I'm going to go to the point page and randomize the point. Already read a really different pattern, randomize it again. I'm going to go to the size page and randomize that so you guys can get a feel for what that does. They're all eighth notes right now. A lot of rhythmic variability and possibility with it. And let's make the attack a little bit faster. Makes it way more percussive. Increase that decay, just kind of make it just a little bit more organic sounding, I think, with that tail. Uh, it gets really interesting when we start messing with the pitch because those springs did have a pitch, but not really, they weren't tuned to anything. We can start closing the filter up. And the beauty of music is once you get something and it repeats enough times, it starts becoming really musical, right? We also have a level that we can randomize. It's almost like we're giving it a velocity because this is sample based. One of the coolest things about sampler or when you're working with a, a device, you know, you're not, you're not just controlling it, you're letting it do its thing, especially when you're using random features. Uh, it can be really stifling if you go, oh, I found the right pattern. I'm never going to touch this device again because it's like making the right pattern. So you want to commit it to audio, which is what I did in the previous track. So the way resampling works is uh, we set up a new audio track, which is this resample track. And in the routing section, we've got, uh, I always like to read this as a sentence, right? Audio from resampling, and it's going to the master track. So when you're resampling, uh, which is this middle option in the drop-down box, you're taking your master signal and you're capturing it and recording it as, as you're hearing it. So what I want to do is I want to resample uh, what's happening with sampler. So uh, just to ensure there's no other stuff coming out, I'm just going to solo sampler and I'm going to arm the resample track and launch a record for a clip. And then I'm just going to play with sampler. Let's, you know, as it's recording, Let's actually make it a little bit louder. A little bit more. And then give it a little bit more heat. All right, so now, you know, we can start jumping around. Uh, let's jump around the size. So that's a different pattern. Let's jump to different points. We can play with the pitch. That's a cool one. And 
And, you know, if you just stick to one section like the pitch, the pattern remains the same, the levels and everything. So there's a familiarity to it, uh, but we're just changing the tones within that pattern, so to speak. So let's go back to random uh, on the point. Right, and then now we can stop uh, recording this clip or I'll stop uh, global playback and that'll stop sampler too. Because otherwise, since this is just a sequencer, it doesn't require a clip or MIDI input to play. It just needs uh, global transpose to be on play for it to go on forever. So now we can go and solo our resample track uh, there are no effects. There's no processing on it. It's just, again, recorded was coming up. And this is a cool illustration of it literally capturing what you're hearing because this is me raising the volume. You can see the waveform getting a little bit more gain right here. And, you know, all it's left to do is start to find an interesting section, right? And it's already quantized. Sounds like a pretty cool sample. Just something to get started. It'll add a lot of texture to your rhythm section. Uh, it could be something in the background. You can even add more delay and start playing with it as you know something that's launching its own delay tails. So I really like it. Um, I, I think Max for Live is a great addition if anybody's thinking of upgrading to Max for Live from standard or if you have Suite and you don't touch Max for Live because you're like, I don't know what that is. Just dip your toes and you, your life will never be the same.